So far through the lessons, we've worked with a lot of different data. We've worked with variables, we've worked with arrays, we've worked with getting the post information submitted from a form. And so now what I'm gonna work with is permanently storing our data somewhere. And I've got a couple different options. I can store things on a user's computer. I can store things in a text file. I can also store things in a database. And that is the most robust solution. And usually when people learn PHP, they usually will learn, and it kind of goes hand in hand, the MySQL database. And this series isn't necessarily to teach you how to use the MySQL database. We are gonna look at it a little bit. We're gonna create a user and we're gonna kind of look at the structure just a little bit. But what we will do is we're gonna go ahead and start developing pages that link to the database so that we can create tables. We can also add user information in there and be able to retrieve that same information. And so we're gonna start working with databases now in this series. And so when we installed in lesson one and in lesson two our LAMP or WAMP servers, we also had the graphical front end interface that we installed, and that's going to be called phpMyAdmin. And if I just type in localhost and then ph forward slash phpMyAdmin and I hit enter, that'll take us to the graphical front end of our database. Now, phpMyAdmin is a separate application, but it, what it does is it ties into our database system and provides us that wonderful front end that we can use to work with our database. If you look here, I'm gonna highlight, this is the username that's by default within our system, it's called root. And same thing goes for the Linux system, it's root by default. And what I wanna work with is, I'm gonna actually create a new user rather than working with root for when I actually set up my passwords and my um, connection to the actual database system itself. So I will be doing that here shortly, but I wanna point out also the fact that here on the left-hand side are the databases that we have in our system itself. I've got four of them by default here. If I were to click on the test database, you can see that I've gone from localhost now to the test database. Within a database, we have tables that we can work with. I can create a new table. Within the tables are gonna be our records, which are gonna be things like you know first name, last name, and all that information that we would keep in a database system. So that's gonna be stored in tables. I'm gonna go ahead and go back. If you ever get lost in what screen you're on, you can always use these breadcrumb links that are up here at the top and click back on the local host and that will take you back to the very beginning and we can go ahead and work from there. Now I did say that I want to create a new user to work with from the future lessons here within the PHP series so I'm going to go ahead and just come up here to privileges and rather than using the root user like we would normally use here on this setup I'm going to go ahead and create a new user to work with and a new password to work with because the text that we type in here is going to be um, easy to be seen within our code and you'll see that when we start working on the next lesson but let's go ahead and just do an add. I'm going to add a new user and I can go ahead and give it a username and so let's just go ahead and I'll give it my first name the host I want to choose localhost since I'm so local and it fills in localhost for us that's going to give me the ability to log in here using the localhost up here at the top for my page password I can go ahead and set and I'm going to use a real simple one of just the word password and then um, scroll down here a little bit further. I don't need to worry about the databases for the user. I will check all for my privileges because I wanna make sure that this user has all privileges for everything for this series. However, I could start narrowing them down to the actual privileges that I wanted. If you're familiar with databases and you're familiar with MySQL, then you can go through and select the things that you actually wanted to uh, give per permissions to. And I'm just gonna go scroll down here and click on create user and it says that I've added the new user. So I've got a new user named Matt that's going to use the local host for accessing the host information. I do have a password on this account. You can see that on my root user I did not have a password. I could also edit their privileges and change the password if I wanted to use that in my videos. However, we're going to focus just on the new account that I created. So in this video, we just took a quick look at phpMyAdmin. I created myself a new user. And in the next video, we're gonna start looking at how to make a connection from the PHP page itself to work with our database system in MySQL.